happy little games. In the 1980s, everybody was kung fu fighting. The era of the ninja and martial arts entered our pop culture in a big way and there was no stopping it. Whether it was on the small screen, the big screen, or the video game screen, heads were getting kicked in and teeth were getting knocked out in such a satisfying way. Video games featuring these stealthy sword slicing devils have been around for quite some time with such notable games as The Last Ninja, Kid Nicky Radical Ninja, Ninja Gaiden, And of course, Ninja Golf. Although most of the previously mentioned games are fantastic, the game we are looking at today features a lone hero who operates in the shadows with his faithful canine by his side. No, I'm not talking about Ace the Bat Hound and Batman. I'm talking about the sequel to the 1987 smash hit Shinobi, which goes by the name of Shadow Dancer. What real life canine was the inspiration for the dog in this game? So stock up on your throwing stars and sharpen your sword because this is the history of Shadow Dancer. The year is 1989 and Sega of Japan is looking to create a follow-up to its extremely successful Shinobi arcade game. Shinobi was released to not only widespread acclaim, but also bags and bags of quarters back in 1987. It was designed by Yutaka Shigano who brought the ninja atmosphere mixed in with a little bit of rolling thunder to arcades everywhere. For those of you who don't know, Shinobi sees you controlling a ninja by the name of Joe Musashi who has to stop the evil organization Zed from kidnapping the children of his clan. The game is set across five stages with sub-levels all throughout in which you have to rescue the various children and dispatch those nefarious enemies along the way. You also have ninja magic up your sleeve which kills all the enemies on screen. The game even includes bonus rounds in which you throw ninja stars at the enemies who are jumping towards you. The game was ported to a number of home systems with varying degrees of success. If you're curious about the history of the game, I did a video on it a couple of years ago and will link to it down below. When it came time to start development for the follow-up, Sega of Japan introduced the System 18 hardware board, which was basically a souped-up System 16 board. This board featured better sound, more graphic options, etc. This also had the dreaded suicide battery that was also prevalent with the System 16 board. Mr. Shigano had decided to leave the System 16 and System 18 board behind along with the Shinobi franchise and jumped up to the System 24 board to create the arcade game Crackdown so a brand new team was quickly assembled. They had decided upon doing a reboot of the original Shinobi but adding new gameplay mechanics. The one new major addition to the gameplay is your faithful K9 Yamato. He was based off of the famous real Japanese dog by the name of Hachiko, who gained notoriety in the 1920s and 30s when his owner suddenly died. Every day for the following nine years, Hachiko would return to the railway station to meet his master who unfortunately never returned. The legacy of the dog continues to this day with statues, books, and movies all about him. The development team felt that a faithful canine that can assist you in your quest would be a nice addition to the game. They wanted to keep the successful play mechanics from Shinobi but also add different enemies and more obscure locations. 
locating and rescuing kids were out and defusing time bombs were in along with the usual end of level bosses and bonus rounds. Shadow Dancer made its way into the arcades in 1989. As the story goes, considerable time has passed since the original Shinobi took place. An enemy organization known as Asian Dawn has commandeered the space shuttle and is using it to launch various attack satellites. To distract any known vigilantes, they have planted time bombs at various locations which you have to disarm. You and your faithful canine friend to the end, Yamato, must battle through these dastardly villains and crush Asian Dawn once and for all. In certain versions of the game, the main character you play as is Hayate, who is the estranged son of Joe. The game takes place across four levels in which you have to use your shurikens, sword, and ninja magic, all while dealing with the various baddies of each level. You have three buttons at your disposal, one for jumping, one for attacking, and one for ninja magic which wipes out all the enemies on screen and does serious damage to the various bosses. The gameplay mechanics are very similar to the original Shinobi except for the addition of your dog Yamato. When he senses danger, he will bark, giving you the option of sending him over to attack them. While the enemy is distracted, this gives you the opportunity to take them out. You have to be quick though, because if you take too long or if the enemy has a strong defense, the dog will get hurt. Don't worry though. There won't be any pity parties put on by PETA because the dog isn't killed. He just turns into a defenseless puppy. He stays in this form until the next time bomb is defused or you finish the stage. As I mentioned, your primary method of attack are your shurikens and thankfully you have an unlimited supply. You also have a sword you can use if you are close enough to an enemy. Stronger weapons are granted after you defuse half of the time bombs in each stage. The ever so powerful ninja magic makes its return in one of three random forms. These are extremely powerful and shows off a nice cutscene which is something different than Shinobi. They are still just as effective though clearing all the enemies on the screen. Something else that makes its return are the bonus stages. Instead of the enemies jumping across a large gap to get to you, you are at the bottom of a building looking up and the ninjas are dropping down. If you manage to complete this part, you get a free guy. There are four missions in total with each one containing between three and four stages. The primary goal is to defuse a certain amount of time bombs that are scattered throughout each stage in order to proceed to the goal. The final stage of each mission is the big boss that you have to take out. The missions you encounter are the airport. The train yard. The caves. And the launch facility. Similar to the first Shinobi, the bosses are large and in charge and are just as difficult until you get the patterns down. The bosses you encounter are Armored Samurai, <laughs> Locomotive, <laughs> Blade, 
Blade. And the final boss is Serena. Rumor has it that this was the first time a woman has appeared as the final boss in a video game. If you're able to defeat Serena, a beautiful cutscene is shown with atmospheric music playing in the background. Thanks to the upgraded System 18 hardware, the graphics are fantastic with smooth parallax scrolling and lots of detail in the backgrounds. The animation is also nice and smooth which provides a fantastic gameplay experience. The levels are filled with nice melodic tunes. The sound effects are really good including some nice digitized speech and barking that Yamato makes. After these messages. The game was converted to a number of systems, but let's go ahead and look at the one most people are familiar with, which is the Genesis version. The full title is Shadow Dancer, The Secret of Shinobi, just in case people weren't familiar with the franchise. The story changes depending on which region you are playing this in. In Japan, the hero is Joe Musashi's son, but in the English version, you are playing as Joe himself. They added to the backstory which sees Joe attempting to avenge the death of his pupil Kato. Yamato was initially Kato's dog, so he brings Kato along to get in on the action. Instead of having to take down Asian Dawn, you have to take down the evil ninja cult Union Lizard. This game is a new entry into the franchise which borrows elements from the arcade game but creates a whole new game around these mechanics. You still have your faithful canine friend Yamato to aid you in your quest, which you will definitely need. The gameplay remains pretty much the same, although there is now a charge meter that needs to be filled before you can unleash Yamato to attack. Also, instead of defusing time bombs, you are back to rescuing children just like in Shinobi. The first person perspective bonus rounds have been replaced, instead seeing you jump off the building yourself shooting all the ninjas as you descend. The five levels you encounter are burning downtown. Battle on the Railway. Statue of Liberty. In the Darkness. And the Union Lizard. The graphics are absolutely fantastic with a huge amount of parallax scrolling in the background. The flame effects on burning downtown never get old and really shows off the power of the 16-bit Genesis. The music is phenomenal, especially the ending sequence. As you would expect from a Sega title, the controls are nice and tight and although it is in a different setting, the gameplay feels like the arcade original. Although personally, I would have liked a straight up conversion of the arcade game, this one is great in its own right. <laughs> Let's 
let's move it down a notch and take a look at the Commodore 64 version. Upon first glance, you'll notice that the speed of the game is running at about 80% of the arcade original, which definitely makes for a different gameplay experience. The character sprites are fairly detailed with decent animation all throughout. Unfortunately, there is a status bar which takes up the lower part of the screen which is prevalent in all of the other 8-bit computer conversions. The backgrounds are nicely detailed and we even get some excellent parallax scrolling in the background which is something not even the 16-bit Amiga and Atari ST versions would include. Although the attract sequence is missing, the entire ending sequence is included along with all of the levels and various bosses. Even the first person bonus rounds made it over. For some odd reason, the game has no in-game music. It plays pretty good, although enemies tend to respawn at a frequent rate. It's a pretty good conversion, although not quite as good as the 64 version of Shinobi. The Sega Master System decided to try for a straight up port of the arcade original. The size of the sprites are absolutely huge and look very similar to the arcade game in still shots. One disadvantage in having such large sprites is that fewer enemies appear on screen at the same time. Certain level sections have also been omitted as well. Yamato no longer follows you by your side, but he is available to attack enemies while crouched. He can be summoned into action three times per level. The first person perspective bonus rounds made it over, but so did the new bonus rounds found in the Mega Drive version, which takes place between the second and third levels. This turned out to be a really good version, especially considering it's running on 8-bit hardware. Sticking with the 8-bit, the ZX Spectrum version is up next. The characters are large and fairly detailed and the game seems to move along at a brisk pace. Everything for the most part is monotone, which is typical for a lot of Spectrum games. The color clash has been kept to a minimum, but because everything is monotone, the enemies tend to blend into the background, making them difficult to see. The animation is a bit ropey, but at least there are a decent amount of enemies on screen at once. As far as the sound goes, it's as quiet as an SBD in church, letting out only the shortest and sweetest of blasts. The game controls fairly well, and the programmers should be commended for bringing as much of the arcade game over as they could. The Amstrad version is up next and the first thing you notice is how detailed and colorful the graphics are. These were programmed in 16 color mode and look really nice. The animation is much smoother than the Spectrum's effort and really reminds you of the arcade original. The scrolling is fairly decent although the speed doesn't quite match the other 8-bit versions. Control wise it feels pretty good although there is something I need to mention. When you send Yamato over to attack an enemy, he looks like he is having a love affair with the guy's leg. It's best to just let him finish. We get some good music on the title screen, but as far as the sound effects go, similar to the Spectrum, all we get are random popcorn farts. Let's take a look at the best home computer conversion of the game, which would be the Amiga 500 version. This version clearly gets it right with large detailed sprites and smooth animation. 
The backgrounds are very detailed as well and looks like they were ripped straight from the arcade game. The developers were only given a videotape with the game being played and not an actual arcade game to use as reference. The animation is very smooth, almost as smooth as the arcade original. As usual, this was ported from the Atari ST version but thankfully significant improvements were made. The music is fantastic and actually sound better than what the arcade game provided. The sound effects are good as well with a fair amount of digitized voices and barks. It already gets big marks in my book for having music and sound effects at the same time. Similar to all other 8-bit ports, there was only one fire button to use so sacrifices had to be made. Overall though, it still feels like Shadow Dancer and it's a lot of fun to play. The Atari ST version looks very similar to the Amiga with a slight loss of color. The animation on the sprites are just as smooth but the scrolling is a bit choppy choppy. It's not bad, just not as smooth as on the Amiga. The sprites and the backgrounds look good and are very detailed. As you can imagine, the thing that took the biggest hit are the sound effects and music. At some point, they are just ear piercing and I found myself having to mute the sound. The controls feel good, it's just a shame that the scrolling isn't very smooth which really detracts from the gameplay. Shadow Dancer has been one of my favorite arcade games for a long time. Although the game is a bit short and does get repetitive, the addition of your dog Yamato really brought something unique to the table. Also, any chance you get to live out your fantasy as a ninja, killing bad guys is A-OK -okay with me. If you've never had a chance to save the world alongside your faithful canine friend to the end, be sure and give this game a shot. You'll be glad you did. If you enjoyed this video or any of my content that you've watched, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, be sure and click the link below. Thanks everybody for watching.